You must use the mic. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> I'm Deborah Mollis. <laughs> I'm using the mic. <laughs> I'm from Handel Architects. I've had the honor of working with these folks for almost 18 months now um, on this project. It's been a truly eye-opening experience for us at Handel. We um, have learned a great deal, and we're very excited to share it with, with the community and, um, and with all of our colleagues what's going on here. So, there are, there's a group of master plan principles that we tried to execute for the design for the, the Cornell Residential Tower. There was some connections and we wanted to create a beautiful indoor-outdoor experience. We are trying to provide a campus marker so that from the surrounding um, neighborhoods and the surrounding city, our building will provide a beacon, almost like a Jeffersonian type of tower that will, will alert everyone as to where the center of the campus is. And then on the right, you see sort of what's leading to this presentation. Our mascot, a man in a nice, delicious, warm suit. He's thermally wrapped. He's breathing nice, fresh air. And we're optimizing the performance of the building. And then we're providing a, a beautiful environment for people to live in. So one of the, the initially striking um, aspects of the site actually is purely its sighting. It's the red building on the upper right, and it's really located very nicely with a large facade facing south. It seems kind of obvious, but it's really actually a wonderful moment here that we have very small east-west facades and a very broad southern facade. So again, we see our toasty man, and this is a diagram here that shows a plan of our building wrapped in this delicious thermal wrap. And the, we're also showing here an elevation of the project. At the base, the wrap pulls back to show a beautiful ground floor lobby. And at the top, although we're not showing, there are some large windows up here. So what, what we're talking about in this slide is sort of the overall concept of this compact building form, which is actually very important for passive house, uh, successful passive house design. But we're also showing that we do have some opportunities to pull the building open and really show some, some great glass. And one of the things about passive house that I'm sure you all realize is the, the design flexibility. We work with Lois, it's sort of a very much a back and forth. Can we do this? Can we do that? Sort of back and forth, trying to get the architect to get their vision while also maintaining all of the criteria for the building. And so one more thing about the sort of basic design principle here is there's an outdoor balcony at every floor where we're putting our condensers. So the thermal wrap is sort of bending inside, allowing those condensers to sit outside. They will be breathing through this vertical louver. On every floor, we'll have condensers that are feeding a, um, a horizontal run of refrigerant. And we'll show you more slides about that later. We're seeing here a little bit more about the modulation of the facade and its development, which ends up to look like this. So the facade will be made by Eastern Wall Systems. It's a panelized facade system. We'll show you a detail on the next slide, but what we're showing you here is it, the panels will be you know, 36 by 10 feet tall. They'll be fabricated in a shop. The windows will be installed in the shop, and that's actually critical for maintaining a very tightly sealed envelope. And so really what we mostly have to worry about is the joints. Right, because everything else is done in the shop in a controlled environment. And Eastern, I have to say, they are contractors, <laughs> but they have been wonderful in helping us develop really special details for this project. Uh, we're utilizing some very interesting paint on the facade, which has actually nothing to do with Passive House, but we're very proud of it. It's also an innovative type of paint that is color shifting and will take the light in different ways at different times of day. So it's another innovative aspect to the project that we're very much excited about seeing how, how it will look. <laughs> so here is our extremely typical facade detail. Right, This is a section. This is the outside. This is the inside. This is super typical. We have a rain screen metal panel facade with about two to four inches of insulation. The, the facade is held on to its backup 
with thermally broken clips that were developed, that were brought to the project very, very early on, and that was the first step with Eastern, will you use these? And then they, they said yes, right? So that was really one of the first steps. They had never used these, these clips before. Then you have your water line, air and water line, and then six inches of insulation, and then you have a line of your, your thermal, um, your vapor barrier. <laughs> I say it about 100 times a day. <laughs> your vapor barrier line, which is the key line that needs to be continuous, your air seal line that's continuous around the entire building. And so here, here we're seeing, again, this is a key plan, that same plan. This area here is the, the separation between that interior space and that condenser balcony. We're utilizing the Shook product here that's going to allow us to continue our line of thermal insulation and provide that continuity while breaking the interior from the exterior. Our, our um, air and water barrier is continuous and then our interior barrier will be continuous as well. So this is the extreme case of what we're doing here. There's a door onto that balcony and that door, we're utilizing a refrigerator door that will have a, a thermal insulation value of an R32. Our wall in general is an R32 wall. And <laughs> is that not? <laughs> but then the, the thickest part of the wall, but then the, since the facade modulates in and out, the average will be about an R20. That is not sort of a nominal R20 value in the wall assembly, right? It's R32 in places and R17 in places. Um, you average it all out and you get R20. So I just want to say first, how freaking great is it that you're learning about Passive House from the developers and the architect and not the Passive House consultant? I mean, come on. <laughs> Job done, right? Job done.